Listen, I could just go all day and tell you all the accomplishments of this man, five-time Grammy Award winner. You know he's a member of the Opry. We love him. Marty Stewart, friend, how you doing? I'm all right, Miss Kelly. Let's talk about the Pilgrim. 20th anniversary of the release of this album and now putting it out on vinyl for the first time. I love vinyl. I love the sound of it. I love the hiss and the pop and the crack and the needle. And I feel like there's a, a vibrancy that you get with vinyl you just don't get with any other medium. Why put it out on that right now? Well, there, our audience seems to be an audience that understands vinyl and likes vinyl like you and I do. And the other thing I like about records is being able to, the thing I used to love about buying records was holding the artwork in your hand and looking at the cover over and over and over and over again. And it becomes a part of you. And um, I just think I'm with you. I think there's a, there's a sound of vinyl, there's a warmth to it. And it, it just kind of feels permanent. You know, there's, a, a, we, we ebb and flow with different mediums of music, but vinyl always seems to stick around. And there's something about it said, Handing to somebody a record, go, here's my latest record, and handing them a vinyl copy. I like that. I do too. And you've got 10 songs that were unreleased. Now, we know you well enough to know you never throw anything away. So were <laughs> you just going through and you found these songs? Tell me about the discovery of them and, and putting them out now. The archives uh, of the Pilgrim. And I rediscovered a lot of things I'd forgotten about. But uh, the Pilgrim was a record that had, um, it was kind of an opera if you will. And uh, it had, I had to have people help, help me tell the story. Amy Lou came by, Connie came by, I think Dolly came by, Johnny Cash, uh, George Jones, Ralph Stanley, Earl Scruggs, Uncle Josh Graves. But when I would have these people in the studio, uh, they were my friends. And I, I would just, after we got the business of the day done, I said, let's do this. And we just kept recording. Just play me this one, play me that one. And there were a lot of things back in those performances that I went back and, and pulled that were absolutely brilliant. And there were songs that I forgot I almost finished writing that we our demos that were a part of this. It just seemed a little more interesting 20 years down the road. I love it. I was listening to Been Lonely Too Long this morning. And I mean, these songs are so incredible. It had to be tough when you were thinking in 1999 when this came out to cut that one, for that one not to make the cut. Uh, how many more do you have in your back pocket that we don't even get to hear yet? Pilgrim, there's probably 10 more, you know, of various performances, some, some better than others, but and I think there's probably 10 more songs. I was listening earlier, um, you did a podcast with our buddy Steve Azar, love that guy, and you said to him, anything before the Pilgrim is hard for you to listen to of your own material. What was it about this album that was so pivotal? I think it was the first record that um, I didn't pay attention to if it, if it went to a certain place on the chart or if it got me in the popularity parade. I, I walked away from the game and went more to my heart. And I let the heart become the chart. And I let that dictate every decision concerning the Pilgrim. There, there comes a point in your life, I think, you know, I did, I did the math. I had, so I'm married to the girl I love. I have a, my favorite Telecaster guitar. I've got a cool pair of cowboy boots and a cowboy coat and a hundred bucks in my pocket. Now, anything on top of that is gravy. And so you might as well stand where you believe and do what you believe in the most. And it was, I saw also that storytelling, that era of country music kind of slipping away. And I wanted to get one more gasp of it and these people that I just mentioned a few minutes ago I wanted them to help me tell my story they were my friends and my family and so that was what helped me drive the, the decision to make the building when did you really start to collect all of your pieces I, I know that you've always been a connoisseur of, of finding some of the most beautiful pieces that may have been discarded that we might have lost truthfully uh, just from, you know, the onstage outfits to a set list. How are you really keeping those together? And when did it start, Marty? Well, it started when I was a kid down in Philadelphia, when uh, country bands would come through and play the county fair or the Choctaw Indian Fair or gospel groups would come through, you know, singing their songs in my hometown, buying albums back to vinyl, you know, autographs or asking a musician, can I have your guitar pick? Uh, it started like that, and uh, I got really serious about it in the early 80s, 
uh, because I, I went to an antique mall here in Nashville one day and there were a lot of things that belong to, you know, an old producer in this town that were so important that were just discarded, you know, for pennies. Mm -hmm. But what really did it, I bought Patsy Klein's uh, makeup case for 75 bucks in a junk shop here in Nashville in the early 80s. And I went, this is wrong. And, you know, the Country Music Hall of Fame, always, that's our ultimate treasure chest. But just as a citizen, I began there. And it started out in my bedroom at my mom and dad's house and a little warehouse and a little bit bigger warehouse and you know it's sitting in the a huge warehouse in mississippi now you know with a cultural center being created around but it always and looks to me. i'm just so happy that you're re-releasing this this is amazing the pilgrim it's on vinyl everybody 10 unreleased songs you get those on the cd you've got the the coffee table book as well right there's a Pilgrim uh, book. That's right. That's right. And it's really cool. It takes, takes you through the whole journey, the creation of the record and how it brought it, brought me out on the other side of that record and how starting over is okay. Sometimes. You know what? We are just so happy that you are doing all of this and really keeping that history for us all. Can't wait to see it when it's all done. Fran, thank you so much for talking to us. Glad to do it. Back to the studio now. <laughs>